Did you know the average American eats 52 pounds of fries every year and more and more are being eaten at home? So right now we're going to check out how one company is going high tech in creating a crispier crunch for this supersized side dish. They're a golden bite of pure delight, usually found only in fast food franchises. But since 2004, cutting edge technology has brought this famous fry to oven doors everywhere. The extra crispy fry is designed to mimic the crispiness and the golden brown color that you find in a, a quick service or a fast food fry. Since 1952, Orida has sliced up over 100 varieties of French fry. And each year, at their plant in Ontario, Oregon, one billion pounds of potatoes make the French fry connection. First, potatoes arrive by the truckload, over 100 trucks each day. When we're unloading a truck, we'll run the potatoes across the dirt eliminator, and eliminate any loose dirt that are on the potatoes. Next, these dirty tubers take a tumble in a rock trap, where a flume of water washes rocks to the bottom and vines to the top away from potatoes. And it takes a lot of liquid locomotion to get these spuds moving through the factory. We'll use a million gallons of water in a shift of, of production. Uh, water's probably the best way to handle a potato. It's the most economical and it's the gentlest way to handle a potato. It gives us one more step of washing. Then they get a potato haircut as steam injects into an enclosed peeler, lifting skins right off. The steam then flashes off and, and all the water in the water molecules then rapidly boil. And that just lifts the skin off the potato. Next, a mechanical scrubber smooths off any loose skins. Then a peel scanner checks the squeaky clean spuds on their way out. It's a computer that basically will take a picture every 20 to 30 seconds of the product, evaluate it. Once they've had their close up, Larger potatoes get cut in half, so fries will be the same size. Our customers want their potatoes to be somewhere between three and five inches long, and they don't want a nine inch French fry. Next, a water knife turns potatoes into small fries. Water knife system is it's basically just a pump system that has a head in it that has a series of knives stacked in there. And they're all perfectly symmetrical, and that's how we make a French fry. Since about 80% of a potato is water, Orida runs them through a giant dryer. The drying process is a pretty critical step in the overall process. We look to remove about 10 to 15% of that moisture in that potato to, to try and make sure that they're really extra crisp. But you can't have these Frenches without the fry. And Orida's got a secret for making theirs taste like the fast food variety. We'd use a top secret coating prior to the fry process, and that in conjunction with frying really set that French fry up to make it really truly extra crispy. Then they take the big chill in a blast freezer at 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, all they need is an everyday oven to return to their crispy selves. This curly companion to Arby's roast beef and other sandwiches dates back to 1988. And get this, they cook up more than 125 million pounds of the crazy taters every year. It's comparable to the weight of over 170 747 airplanes. It's incredible. It all starts with piles of potatoes so high, low, you can ski down them. At this processing plant in southern Washington, potatoes arrive by the truckload. For the Arby's Curly Fry, we bring in 40 to 50 semi-loads of potatoes per day, and each truck is approximately 30 to 35 tons of potatoes. Workers unload the potatoes and send them on their way through a channel of rushing water. It helps to clean the potatoes, as well as it's an easy way to transport them versus belts and conveyors. The water system traps rocks and other debris that were picked up in the potato fields. The potatoes also separate according to size. And check this out. Water propels the potatoes through pipes to a cutter. Inside the pipes, the spuds sail to the blades at 60 miles per hour. So in the cutting process, the potato is fixed going through the knife, and the knife spins against the potato to generate the curly fry. 
the freshly cut coils rush out in waves, and some of them might surprise even the biggest fry fans. A great story from 2008, a young lady from Hendersonville, North Carolina, found a curly fry that when she pulled it from end to end, measured over two and a half feet long. Want to know the secret for fries that are crispy on the outside and soft on the inside? Arby's blanches the potatoes for 20 minutes in hot water to deactivate enzymes. In the blanching process for the curly fry, purpose is to develop the texture of the product. So when you bite into an Arby's curly fry, you're gonna have a nice baked potato interior. As the fries dry, workers add water to a dry mix of garlic, onion, salt, and other spices. This becomes the batter. The curly fries go through the batter applicator. The fries go under a waterfall of batter that coats the fries. And then they proceed under a series of air knives to help smooth out the batter before they go into the next step, which is the frying process. It takes just 30 seconds in the hot oil. We fry the product in oil at zero grams of trans fats at approximately 360 to 375 degrees. The fries only partially cook, then head straight to the freezer. The rest of the cooking happens at the restaurants when customers order up any size of curly fries. You know, some people like to dip these in cheddar cheese sauce. I like ketchup and I like the horsey sauce as well. At McDonald's restaurants all across America and in 117 countries around the world, servers ask the same question thousands of times a day. With fries? The answer for most of us. With fries? Okay. McDonald's customers love our fries. In fact, over 50% of our customers order fries with each of their meals. I love French fries. It starts on the farm. McDonald's uses about 3.5 billion pounds of uh, French fries a year. That's global. This factory alone makes about a million pounds of fries every day. To make all those fries, these trucks each haul 25 tons of spuds from the field to the factory. Once they're washed, this high-pressure steam machine peels off the skins. That uh, superheats the, the water underneath the skin of the potato, and so when that high pressure is released, that uh, water then flashes off into steam and it loosens the peel off the outside of that potato. Workers hand cut any imperfections off the naked potatoes, but it takes some serious firepower to give them that signature fry shape. Basically, these long tubes act like potato cannons with a grid of razor sharp knives inside. They will shoot forward through a, a grid of knives at about 75 miles per hour, and that's how we get that, uh, that classic McDonald's French fry uh, shoestring. The newly minted shoestrings flood out onto conveyor belts, and get this, to make sure every single fry is perfect, McDonald's employs some seriously high technology in this next step. We'll send over 70,000 pounds of raw french fry strips to the optical sorters an hour. Optical scanners look at each and every potato strip, searching for blemishes. The machine automatically snags any fry with a fault. There's 132 little air jets at the end of that belt, and the camera's going to tell which air jet to put a little puff of air on that french fry, knock it out of its flight pattern, where then later it can get the defect uh, cut out of that french fry strip. But perfectly shoestring potatoes are only part of the secret to the world's most famous fries. The cooking process does the rest. We call it the art of processing. That's where it starts. These 100-foot long blanchers soak the potato strips in steaming hot water for about 15 minutes to give these fries the texture you expect. When you go to McDonald's and, and open up a french fry and look inside of it, it should have that, a nice fluffy baked potato type internal texture and that's what the blancher does for us. To get the addictively crispy exterior takes a two-step process. This machine dries the blanched potatoes before they dive into the fryers. In these vats of vegetable oil, bubbling at almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the fries earn their name. By both uh, doing a quick fry here at the plant and the fry at the McDonald's restaurant, the combination of those two allows us to get that nice, crisp exterior shell on that French fry that, that you expect every time you uh, bite into one of those McDonald's French fries. It's now out of the frying pan and into the freeze tunnel. The short trip through drops the temperature to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It prepares them for packaging, allows them to be shipped all over the world. This plant alone supplies fries to McDonald's restaurants in more than 20 countries, where they fry them up one more time. 
If you lined up all the uh, McDonald's french fries produced worldwide on an annual basis uh, from end to end, uh, they would actually travel from the earth to the moon and back almost 600 times.